a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with knowing how to create content. If you wonder what to create, how often and where to post, and if you worry that you're giving away too much free content, stick around. We're gonna break it all down for you in a simple to follow method. Hi, I'm Deandra Harder, a CPA with over 20 years experience optimizing businesses of all sizes. And this is my partner, Carmen Reed Gilkison, a certified whole person coach with over 20 years of corporate marketing know-how. We co-founded Encore Empire to specifically help women in midlife to start, grow, and optimize their online businesses so that they can achieve profitability, impact more people, and create the life freedom they deserve. So today, we're going to simplify the mystery of content creation. Yeah. We're going to cover three things. Number one, how to know what to create. Number two, how often and where to post. And number three, should you be worried about giving away too much free content? Yes. So how to know what to create. It may seem that there's all these people out there and they always have the best posts and the best blog posts and the best content ever. And you're sitting here spinning your wheels or staring at the blinking cursor on a blank page wondering what the heck, how do they do that? So knowing how to create content starts with knowing what to create. And this becomes so much easier when you identify your three to seven content pillars. So what are content pillars? These are the subtopics of the main topic of your business. So as an example, if you're a health coach, your main topic is health. Examples of possible subtopics are nutrition, exercise, sleep, fitness tools, and mindset. So depending on what your focus on, you know, we always want to niche down. And so most people have, if they're a health coach, they focus on one area, women over 40 or families or yoga or whatever it is. So your content pillars are going to match in your niche and your topic. They're going to be subtopics of what your main topic is. So you can use Google and YouTube as inspiration for content. Uh, look at what topics are most commonly searched and figure out how you can put your own spin on them to stand out from the crowd. Once you identify your content pillars, you then use the feedback that you get from your audience, or you can also look for common questions and issues that people experience in general to develop topics for each. That's right. So the second piece of this we're going to talk about is how often and where to post. Now, your job is to cut through the noise and stand out by sharing valuable content often. We recommend that when you're starting out on social media and by starting out, you don't have to be new, but let's say it's a new channel that you're starting out on that you haven't really paid much attention to. That means you're starting out on that particular channel. So you focus on one channel at a time to build momentum. Mm -hmm. Because if you spread yourself too thin and you try to do it all on all the places, then you're not going to have an impact. Yep. Now, you want to post based on best practices of the channel that you choose. So for example, on Twitter, Twitter is very fast paced and mm -hmm. tweets get buried very, very quickly. So in that case, you, the best practice is to tweet like 10 times or more a day there. Now, on Facebook, if you did 10 times a day, that's complete overkill. Okay, so Facebook and Instagram, you're when you're starting to build that channel out, once per day is recommended to start with, and usually no more than three times a day. So the frequency of posting is not nearly as important as consistency. And I'm going to say that again, because this is extremely important. The frequency of posting is not nearly as important as consistency. So I want you to get real with yourself for a minute and look at your schedule and start off with what you know you can do every single week without fail. 
There's nothing worse than starting out full blast only to realize you just can't get to it. So start small and build up because your audience, the people you're trying to engage with, the people you're trying to attract, the visibility that you're seeking, it takes time. Mm -hmm. And it, if you're not there on a regular basis, consistently, week after week after week, then you're going to lose all the ground that you've gained. Now, if you have a Facebook or a LinkedIn group, now that's a little bit different. There, you're going to want to post more often because you need, you want to keep your people engaged and you want to provide additional value. So give them a reason to spend their time with you. Now, think about this for a minute. You wouldn't throw a dinner party and invite all your friends and then only serve them water and crackers, would you? Of course not. It needs to be worth their time and effort to come to your house for the dinner party they're expecting. It's the same way in your groups. It's got to be worth it or they will leave and they will not return. So the advice that we wanna give you today is start small, be consistent, engage and educate. And if you do those four things, then you're going to be very successful. That's right. And the third piece to this that keeps people from sharing what they really should be sharing that's really going to resonate with their audience and make an impact is they're afraid they're giving away too much free content. So they hold back, you know, they think if I tell them this thing, then they're going to know how to do it and they won't need me. But that's not true. So the short answer to should you worry about giving away too much free content is no. So people fear that, you know, their, their prospective uh, prospects are going to look at the stuff and they're going to say, oh my gosh, they're giving away all the answers. So I don't really have any reason to buy. And the opposite is actually true. You want to give such value in your free content that people are blown away and they imagine how amazing it would be to work with you in a paid capacity, right? And plus you're only able to touch on surface topics in your free content. You, you know, when you're talking about a post, even when we're talking about a blog post, a podcast or a YouTube video, you only have so much time. You're not gonna be able to dive deep. But your content that you're posting, that you're creating, that you're sharing regularly, needs to have value, but there's no way it can give away the farm. It just can't. There, No one's going to go and look at all of your free content over a period of time and tape it all together and figure out what your, your process is. It's just not going to happen. So the value of paid programs is that the client receives guidance, support, and accountability. Those things are not there with the free content. Now, of course, you're giving value with free content. So that's a little bit of guidance. They should be able to walk away with something learned, an aha moment, or have inspiration about how they can do something new or add on to their existing business model or whatever your expertise is. But they should be so important inspired by the free content that they want to go deeper and you should also weave into your free content that you do go deeper so when you're working with your clients you know you can share stories about i worked with this client and this is what we were able to achieve through my program that is x y and z and you know i invite you to hop on a, a consultation call so when you do your free content, you should have a call to action for how they can take it deeper. And you want to let them know that I'm giving you these three tips today. But if you really want to nail this down, then my new uh, course is opening next week or whatever the case may be. And they know how they can go farther with you. So the bottom line is that knowing how to create content isn't rocket scientist or isn't rocket science. Creating value and inspiring through your free content is what you should always aim for so you can lead people down the client journey with you into where you can help them in a paid capacity. And if you're getting value out of what we're sharing today or any of our videos, please like the video and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you and we love to know that what we're doing resonates with you. You know, and we're, we're going to show you this in action right this very second, what we just said. 
we share a ton of value, valuable content inside our free Facebook group. And it's called the Empire of Unstoppable Midlife Women Building Profitable Businesses. And we invite you to join us so that you can learn the tried and true strategies, not only for creating content, but other areas in your business that are necessary for you to increase your profits and your impact. So join us in the group. And if you have any questions on what we shared today, drop them in the comments below and we'll reply there. We do read our comments and we are here every week being consistent with our content for you.